The prisoners being offered the opportunity for early release under the president's clemency initiative will still be branded as former felons once they return to society, which means they'll still be facing the same challenges in employment, housing, education, and voting rights as any other formerly incarcerated person. It's why the plan to bring harsh sentencing policies to an end is really just the beginning. Deputy Attorney General James Cole acknowledged as much this week. The Smart on Crime initiative has a lot of features to it, one of which is reentry. And that starts both while people are incarcerated with the programs that we have in place in the Bureau of Prisons, plus the follow-up that's being done after they come out. We have the Attorney General's Interagency Reentry Council that involves multiple agencies throughout the government because they're so important to make sure that once people get out, they can stay out and become productive members of society. Now, Glenn, what the Deputy Attorney General says is it sounds very good in the soundbite about multiple agencies working together on prisoner reentry, but is there really any there there? Yeah, no, I think we have to give credit to the Attorney General and our President for having this interagency reentry council form council for almost the entire time that they've been there. There have been uh, results, tangible results for people exiting the criminal justice system. As you know, Jonathan, I did six years in prison myself before I exited 13 years ago. I faced many of the barriers you just mentioned, employment, housing, education, and so on. The fact of the matter is that Attorney General Holder, a couple of years ago, uh, categorized all of the collateral consequences on the federal level, over 35,000, so that we could at least mm -hmm. take stock of them, see where they exist, and start, a ro start to roll them back where they are not uh, doing anything to increase public safety, um, but our prison system was created at the intersection of jobless ghettos and backlash to the civil rights era. And if we're going to end this criminal justice system, then we need to focus very closely on how do we remove these barriers so that when people exit prison, they're not going into a virtual prison in the community. Right. We have to get away from punishment for a lifetime. That's really what we have had um, on the area of voting rights. For example, in Florida, we have over one million people who cannot vote mm -hmm. due to mm -hmm. felony convictions. We've seen movement in Virginia where. Advancer Project worked with the governors, the past two governors, and Governor McAuliffe has now actually added to the list of people who can get their rights restored automatically those um, who are who were actually convicted of drug offenses. So finally, we're seeing some movement, but we have a lot of work the, to the, do. The challenge is immense because you, these are the people who could potentially be released have all served a minimum of 10 years. So you're talking about people who have literally been removed for society for at least a decade. These are people who did not, most likely, did not have any type of stable home or job life, that was, well, legal job life before, and now they're going to be back in the workforce, and we already have a tight economy, so it's, it's going to be a really steep hill, but I think that's the critical part of this equation, is giving them the support and the mechanisms to succeed when they re-enter society. Well, you're talking about the job force, and I want to put, put this um, map up that we have. Um, this, this is a map of states that have adopted laws to ban the are you a felon checkbox on, on job applications. and. Is that the kind of meaningful reform that will make a real difference for, for, form, for former felons, does anyone think? You know, uh, on the federal level, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission has actually even gone further than the Ban the Box initiative. I think Ban the Box is great, and it was started by people who are formerly incarcerated in San Francisco. I think that's important to point out. But the EEOC says to employees all across the country that you can't have blanket policies that deny a job based solely on a criminal record because it has disproportionate racial impact and potentially violates Title VII of the Civil Rights Act. Mm -hmm. Definite. So Republicans are, back, are, are backing this largely on ideological and economic reasons. Um, small government, cut spending, but these are also the same arguments that they're using to cut the social safety net, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, TANF and, and med, med, uh, you, know, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Right. So if we're not making serious policy decisions that will support people once they get out of jail, could sentencing reform ultimately create more problems than it solves, you think? Mm. Yeah, you know, one of the people that the president, um, whose sentences the president commuted in December, Clarence Aaron, he, he, mm -hmm. the president commuted his sentence in December. Um, he actually just went home last week. Um, he went through a very long uh, sort of re-entry program. He was in a halfway house, his, you know, with family support, job support, um, you know, community support, all in this, all, you know, headed in this direction. And I think here, you know, you really do kind of need that 
extra that extra safety net to help people otherwise you are in this place but I think that also this is the reason that so many more people are uh, petitioning for pardons because they really want a clean record and a much fresher start uh, after they get out and, and at when the it, end of the day it'll be cheaper to do that right to provide these kinds of programs and reentry programs than to keep oh, them yes. incarcerated right. year by year right and we should point out that one of the reasons why Clarence Aaron got to go home is because of <laughs> Daphna Linsner. Glenn, <laughs> Daphna, <laughs> Judith, and Raul, thank you for joining us. Coming up, a story that stems from the Supreme Court case about Proposition 8 that you have not heard anywhere else. It's a kind of guess who's coming to dinner tale that will amaze you.